Hey everybody, welcome to my video on consumer and producer surplus. My hope here is not to show all the exact arithmetic and algebra behind everything, but to help you see what is similar between calculating consumer and producer surplus across different interventions in our market. So I'm starting with this inverse demand curve, this inverse supply curve, which give us a quantity of 40 and a price of 20. And then I'm gonna introduce a price ceiling of 15. And I'm only going to do it briefly because in this video, I'm also going to talk about a price floor of 40. And I'm also going to talk about a quota of 30. And I'm also going to talk about a tax of 25. I don't know if your class covers all of those things, but my intermediate class does. Usually. Sometimes I skip the quota, but I like the quota. It's cool to talk about. Anyway, and so I'm going to show you a graph right now with some spoilers. I'm okay with showing this because you've probably already watched my videos on price controls and on quotas and on taxes at this point. So here's this graph. Let's talk about what's happening here. If we have a price floor, sorry, a price ceiling at 15, so right across here, what happens in our market? Well, 30 becomes the quantity supplied and let's see consumer surplus is everything below demand and above supply so consumer surplus takes up all this space producer surplus is everything below price above supply so it's all this space and deadweight loss is all this stuff between the 30 and the 40 all the it's between the demand curve and the supply curve for all the missing transactions Okay, that's all fine, but I've cherry picked my numbers here pretty nicely. If I have a price floor of 40, I'm gonna get all I'm gonna get a lot of the same results. Everything below demand, above price, is consumer surplus. So that's different. We lost the area B. Everything below price above supply is producer surplus. So the producers gained area B. Uh, the deadweight loss is still a deadweight loss. Uh, and this quantity is still our quantity. All that stuff. Now, let's look at the quota. We cherry pick a quota of 30. It's got a demand price of 40, a supply price of 15. We're going to still see area A being our consumer surplus. Areas B and C being producer surplus. And area D being deadweight loss. If we do a tax in this market, we get consumer surplus being everything above the demand price below the curve as consumer surplus, everything below the supply price above the supply curve as producer surplus, and all this stuff in area B being tax revenue. So I picked up these numbers specifically so I would never have to change my graph. I want you to see that there is common things that we're looking for in all of them. I need to know the equilibrium quantity. I need to know the quantity that happens with our market intervention. I need to know choke prices. And I need to know the demand price at our market quantity and the supply price at our market quantity. And if I have that information, then I have everything that I need to know to solve for consumer and producer surplus in all of these interventions. These six green dots are the only things you need to answer every question about all of this. So without any regard for what policy I'm looking at, I can calculate the areas A, B, C, and D. The area for A, is half times base times height, the base being the market quantity 30, the height being the gap between 100 and that demand price. A is 900. B is the gap between the demand price and the sale price times the market quantity of 30. C is everything below the price above the supply curve. That triangle is 15 high and 30 across. And D then is everything between the market quantity and the equilibrium quantity 
and between the demand price and the supply price. All right, so we can get the areas of all of those chunks separately, independent of our policies. And now let's look at our policies. Uh, if there's a price ceiling, my consumers, uh, let's see, how much utility do they get? Oops. My consumers, how much consumer surplus do they get? They get A and they get B. Uh, everything above that price ceiling of 15 becomes consumer surplus. Uh, producer surplus in that situation is just C. Deadweight loss is D, and there's no tax revenue. If there's a price floor, the consumers still get A, but B gets transferred to the supplier, who gets B and C. The deadweight loss is still D, and there's still no tax revenue. A quota looks exactly the same as a price floor, at least as far as me measuring consumer and producer surplus. And a tax, let's see, we still have this person getting A, we still have supply getting C, we still have deadweight loss being D, and now we have tax revenue of B. So, kind of a big picture here. A is constant. A is always in consumer surplus. C is constant. C is always in producer surplus. D is constant. D is always deadweight loss. The only thing that's really changing here is B. B moves depending on our policy. If, we've propped, if we push prices down, B goes to the consumers. If we push prices up or limit quantity, B goes to the producers. If we tax, the government takes B for itself. In all these cases, I can calculate my consumer and producer surplus by adding relevant letters. For instance, A plus B for a consumer surplus with a price ceiling is 1,650. Uh, and you can do the rest of them if you want to. So, I don't know if this is helpful to you or not. I hope it is, because otherwise I wasted my time. But if not, too bad. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Good luck out there, and happy econing.